What's up, everybody? I'm Kevin Ioli. That is Dana White. UFC 275 is in Singapore on Saturday. It is going to be live on pay-per-view. Two title fights and a rematch of one of the best fights I have ever seen. Dana, uh, are you as excited for this uh, Joanna Jajic, uh, Zhang Wiley fight as I am? I mean, that was an incredible one the first time around. I am. It's, it's tough to put that kind of pressure on this fight this weekend because when you see a fight like that, it's, it's, it's you know, so lucky. And, and we were so lucky to have been there and actually saw right. that fight live. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it's, it's impossible not to be excited. These two are both absolute savages. And uh, I'm not putting the same expectations on this fight, but it should be damn good. I think, you know, uh, what makes this one even more interesting is they both lost a few times, right? So now they're going into this fight with the pressure on them of, you know, if they want to get the next title shot or be there, they need they need a win. So, you know, there's a lot of significance on the fight, not only just a rematch of a, a, a great fight from 2020. Well, it's even more incredible is, I mean, they're both still two of the top three women in the world, and uh, we're going to get to see it again. So, yeah, it's awesome. You know, Yolanda has been out since that fight. Um, I talked to her yesterday and, you know, she didn't seem to think that was going to be an issue. I like the fact that she took a long time off after the fight uh, because I think it lets her body heal. And she didn't seem to think that she needed to do that. But what is your take on fighters, you know, when they have a brutal fight like that, taking long periods of time off and, and just kind of recovering? I don't disagree with you. I think that when you come out of a war like that was a war, you need time. And those are the type of fights. I mean, that fight was literally uh, Chavez versus Meldrick Taylor. You know what I mean? Those are the kind of fights that can do long lasting damage to right. your career. Yeah, no, no doubt. I, I remember watching the fight over a second or a third time, and I saw myself sitting at rings like this. And I mean, it was crazy when you saw what was going on. Uh, Wiley came back. Do, do you think there's, there's been any change in her? Because she's fought uh, a couple times since then, lost uh, a pair of fights to Rose Nami Yunus. Do you think she's fought at the same level that she was at prior to that? I don't know. I don't know. It's a tough question. I mean, she's still the number two, you know, um, a straw weight in the world, which is a very big deal. Um, I don't know. I don't know. This this weekend's going to tell a lot about both of these girls. You know, Dana, it's interesting because I think, you know, we know in divisions and, you know, it's cyclical, right? And your featherweights are way up now. It seems to me like a couple of the women's divisions are stagnating. Um, and, and certainly the straw weights are, right? You don't have a lot of, you know, Carlos Barza has already beaten Rose twice. You got Wiley uh, there who's had back-to-back -back losses. Um, you know, uh, Marina uh, Rodriguez uh, lost to Carla. So you're in a kind of a spot, you know, there where you don't have a really, would you agree there's not like a logical contender for the title in that division right now? Well, I think that it's it, it's it's actually a fun division. I mean, you got Carla Esparza, Rose Namajunas, uh, Whaley Zhang, Marina, Mackenzie Dern, Jessica Andrade, who's, who's still an absolute beast. Um, Jan, I, I mean, th th there's just, all these women, nobody is really the, the standout like, oh, my God, so much better than everybody else. You have nothing but fun fights mm -hmm. and, and, and the top, you know, in the top seven in that division. Yeah, it's a good a... place to be. Now, in the, uh, you know, you, you have. Now, this weekend, you got Carlos Farza, who just won the belt. This weekend, you got Whaley Zhang versus Joanna. Depending on how this fight goes and whoever wins, it's a damn good fight now against right. Carla. Right, no doubt, and I know I know Carla would like uh, revenge on uh, on Joanna, so that would be uh, a natural storyline there. And they in the co-main event before we get to the main event, uh, Valentina Shevchenko is at it again. I mean, to me, the best uh, female fighter in the world. She is just absolutely phenomenal. The one thing you got to wonder about is, you know, what is her motivation level for somebody like Talia Santos? And I don't say that to disrespect Talia, but Talia is number four. She hasn't been around a long time, and and Valentina has been knocking off number one contenders left and right. Uh, how do you see that fight going? And uh, and you know, I, I everybody has a chance in the fight game. Everybody has a chance, but. Um, it would be let one me of the tell you what I say. This, this is this is more than she has a chance. The problem with this fight is that Santos is way more dangerous than people realize she is. Now, when you're talking about women fighting, and, and, and you got a woman 
um, and, and Talia Santos, who has 13 finishes, 10 of them are knockouts. She has knocked out 10 other women and submitted three. This woman is very dangerous. She's only got one loss in her entire career. And uh, the problem is people don't realize how dangerous this woman is. Now, if Valentina Shevchenko rips through her like she has everybody else, holy sh**. Yeah, Val- holy sh**. Yeah, but Val- I mean, this is going to be a much tougher fight than people think it's going to be. It's going to be interesting. Main event, uh, Glover Teixeira. I-, I wrote a column today, and I talked about how, you know, in a sport filled with nice guys, Glover Teixeira has got to be right at the top of that list. And I think everybody was so happy for him when he won the uh, light heavyweight title from Jan Blachowicz uh, last year. Now you put him in. You don't get many breaks after that. You put him in with Yuri Prohaska. Um, so let me start with asking you about Prohaska. Um, you know, he's only been in the UFC for two fights, and he's already got a title shot after two fights. Uh, what do you see in him? And, and tell people who may not have seen him and, and either of his two fights uh, how good this guy is. Yeah, he's another guy. I mean, to, to, to come in that fast and, and become the number two ranked guy in the world, especially in the light heavyweight division, guys got a 96% finish rate, um, 23 first round finishes, and he's on a 12 fight win streak. He is nasty. Styles make fights, and stylistically, this should be a fun fight because you're going to have Glover Teixeira, who's got great stand-up, heavy hands, knockout power. You're going to see him trying to get this thing to the ground. A-S-A mother p. <laughs> uh, believe me. And uh, the other thing that's interesting is many people believe that if it hits the ground, that Yuri's in big trouble. Many people believe if it stays standing, Glover's in big trouble. We're going to find out. Yeah, it's really, uh, you know, you talk a lot about, uh, and I asked Yuri this, and he he sloughed it off, but I'll, I'll get your opinion. You know, you talk about the UFC jitters and being, you know, being in, on the big show. He's had that experience in the UFC, but having said that, only two fights, and now he's fighting for the title. Um, is, is there a concern that the moment might be too big for him, or just, you know, the fact that, you know, now all of a sudden it's like, hey, this is real? You're right, and I believe in that. Um, you know, if you look at a guy like Glover, Glover's seen it all, done it all, fought them all. Now he's even become the world champion. Um, And yes, for Yuri, this is the first time that he's had the, the, you know, the bright lights on him and and his, his big night, there's absolutely going to be those nerves. Um, And we're going to find out how he handles it. You know, he is a guy, Dana, and I want to get your take on this. I always look, you know, not who can be the champion, but who's going to be the next big star, right? That that person that can take over the sport. And he's a guy that he's really a captivating guy when you talk to him. I think after the last fight, somebody asked him uh, when he that incredible knockout of Dominic Reyes, one of the greatest knockouts in UFC history. Um, somebody asked him about what he, what he was going to do. He won fight of the night and performance of the night, what he was going to do with the money. And he said, you know, girls parties and, and fast cars. Right. And he's one of those kids that uh, I think, you know, he's kind of got that sort of thing that people relate to him and, and can be, you know, can be a star that would rise up above. Do you, do you see that in him? Yeah, absolutely. First of all, first and foremost, it's about how you fight and that he's a bad dude. So, um, all the other stuff is just, you know, if you got that kind of a personality and you are you can fight your ass off, yeah, you're probably going to be a big star. Right. How much do you think this affects, you know, um, I mean, they're not used to fighting on Sunday morning, you know, just being international, they fight on Sunday in Singapore time, so it can be prime time over here. Uh, is that anything, you know, happens in Abu Dhabi too when, when you go over there? Is that anything that's uh, an issue for, you know, timing wise or anything like that for guys? Yeah, I would, I would, uh, I would give the advantage to the younger guy on that one. You know, as you get older, the traveling, the uh, jet lag, all that piles up on you as you get older. Right. Um, so, so I would definitely say that that's an advantage for Yuri. I want to ask you a couple other things, uh, but I want to talk to you about that uh, featherweight division you have. You know, uh, Mosser Evolov's uh, win over uh, Dan Ige. You know, I-, I have great respect for Dan Ige, and that was a dominant performance the other day that he did. Uh, I-, I like this call out of Arnold Allen, uh, but there's a number of guys in that division that you can uh, throw up and uh, say, hey, I'm going to put him against. What was your take on-, on him, and do you think he stamped himself as a legitimate contender now with that performance against Dan? 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and I agree with you. If you look at that top 10 and that division, it's insane. I mean, you, you, you have him. He's, he's ranked number 10 now. You got Bryce Mitchell, Giga, Josh Emmett, Arnold Allen, Calvin Cater, Yair Rodriguez, Ortega, Holloway, and Volkanovsky. All straight killers in the top 10. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it is pretty amazing. And we got uh, Holloway and... Uh, and Yusuf. Yusuf is number 12. Right. He's nasty. Yeah, no, I, I've always thought he, Yusuf was a guy that uh, was going to really be good. Like, I, you know, I, I mean, so far he's been good. He hasn't been as dominant as I may have expected him to be. But I think I really like him as a, as a fighter as well. I agree. Yeah. Um, you know, Charles Oliveira said on Twitter that he knows his next opponent and that he knows he's not fighting in Brazil. Can you fill us in on where, you know, what's up with Charles? Is Islam going to get the fight? He said that he, what did he say? He said he knows who his next opponent is going to be. He didn't reveal it. He said that you told him who it was going to be and that he, it won't be in Brazil. So that was the two, the two nuggets he put out. Um, you know, so what, what are you asking me? You're asking me to tell what? you before I'm ready to announce it? Exactly. Now you, you <laughs> I sit here waiting for you all morning. So, <laughs> so announce it now. Uh, good talking to you, Kev. Have a great weekend. I have plenty. I have all this time, Dana. I have time, time. I mean, what, when, what's the time frame for him? Um, so, and it, um, it, I would say he's probably going to fight in uh, October. I have fights made all the way up to October 8th already. So um, probably October and November. Okay. Fair enough. Um I want to also find out about the featherweight, or excuse me, the flyweights, what's going on. Uh, Dave, I'm not sure what Davidson Figueredo is doing right now. I know you have an interim title fight with Brandon Moreno and Kai Cara, France. Um, what's going on with uh, Figueredo? Have you talked to him or, or anybody on his team about what's up with that? And, you know, he's basically saying he may not fight a flyweight anymore now. Yeah. I mean, listen, that's up to him. I haven't talked to him. Uh, you know, uh, the matchmakers have, but uh, yeah. That, that's up to him you know how this rolls man we don't play games we we, we keep right on moving and, and and you know we keep the divisions rolling you know yeah well well let me ask you this but you know um he he won the title back in january in a close fight which i actually thought moreno won but i know it was a fight that could have gone both either way um why like an interim title fight so quickly i don't know what the situation was i don't remember exactly what happened with him and his camp, but obviously, you know, if we made that decision, it's because they, they either couldn't, couldn't, uh, couldn't come in and perform or there were some games going on. I, I, don't, I don't know the exact story of what happened. Okay. Um, so now I, so I, I'm going to anticipate your answer here, but I'm assuming you don't know yet because you haven't gotten a final verdict from him, but is there a chance that the winner of Moreno versus Cara France would end up just being the champion and with no interim behind it? Yeah. I mean, if you moved up to Bantamweight, then definitely. That would, you would just, you would just put that up uh, for a champion. Yeah. Okay. All right. A couple other things I'll let you get out of here. How, how um, how are you happy? How happy are you with this season of tough? And uh, what do you, you know, what do you see in the prospects? What do you, what are your takes? On yeah, that? it's a good season. It's a, it's a solid season. It started off a little rocky uh, for me. I, you know, I, I didn't love the first fight, uh, but yeah, it, it, it turns right. You, you have to understand too, right now, what we're going to go through over the next couple of years are the effects of COVID and no shows happening for two years. We're going to start to feel that. Um, what, what do you mean? Explain that. Talent. As far as talent, the last two and a half years, all those fights before the, the, the world shut down, there were fights going on every weekend all over the, the world. Development of young fighters. You're talking about. <clears throat> right. And then the only MMA group that went through the thing was us. Right. So you're going to see an effect of up and coming talent here. We're probably seeing it now. And we'll, we'll feel it for the next couple of years. Then hopefully everything gets back into uh, into full swing. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with this season. 
Is that concern you? Because uh, obviously you're only as good as the, the fights that the fighters can and put on, right? I mean, you can do all the bells and whistles, as you say, but if you, you know, at the end of the day, hey, if the talent pipeline, you know, we know everything's cyclical. Sometimes you have great fighters throughout a lot of divisions. Sometimes, you know, it's not as good as it is. Uh, how much of a concern is that? It's not. Um, you know, this is one of the biggest sports in the world. There's, there's athletes training everywhere on this planet right now. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not a concern. Listen, it's going to be, there's definitely going to be a little, little hiccup, but uh, we'll get through it. A couple other things I wanted to ask you about, um, you know, Dustin Poirier is out there and he's been looking for a fight. I feel really bad for him. And everywhere he turns, he says, I'll fight this guy. I'll fight this guy. And, you know, it seems like he's getting shut off at every corner. Uh, what, what kind of thought do you have on him? And, uh, you know, when might you have something ready, uh, a fight ready for him? Yeah, I don't think, I don't think he's getting shut off at every corner. I wouldn't feel too bad for anybody. Listen, we, we make fights. I got to make fights. Think about this. I have to make three fights a year for everybody on the roster. Right. So nobody's just sitting around going, holy shit, I can't find a fight. Why can't I get it? That's, that's well, bullshit. every time you turn around, you you have Nate Diaz complaint. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, let me tell you what. If I don't if I don't keep my obligations to them, then I have to pay them without fighting. So right. what would that tell you? That would tell you that, that probably it's probably not what you're hearing probably isn't 100 percent the truth so. so you're telling me that what somebody tweets may not be accurate is that what you're saying uh, possibly i have to get guys three fights a year right per contract if i don't get them three fights a year i have to pay them that will so but if i'm not paying anybody not to fight the story might not be what it sounds like <laughs> um what about Nate? Nate made a splash. I mean, not Nate, uh, excuse me, Nick, Nick Diaz. He made a splash by saying he wanted to fight Usman, right? Of course, he hasn't won a fight in, you know, in how long. Uh, but uh, are you entertaining a return by him? Or do you, is your belief that last fight should, with Robbie Lawler should have been enough for Nick? Do you think I should do Nick versus Usman? <laughs> you, you do what you want. I'm, I'm just watching them. No, but I mean, yeah. are you entertaining a Nick Diaz return fight in any way? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. I mean, it, it, he fought, he didn't fight badly in that fight, right? I mean, so no. uh, against no. Lawler. So. Especially for as long as he was off and, you know, he's a, listen, there, there's no denying the Diaz brothers are tough kids, man. But and talking I, about Nick Diaz versus Usman is, Usman is the pound for pound best fighter in the world. Right. No, but I, I guess what I'm saying is, you know, Nick, people love Nick. You make fights that people want to uh, want to watch. And he's a guy that I think, you know, as you said, moves the needle. Right. And so but I need to look out. I need to look out for Nick and make sure that Nick doesn't get hurt. Well, I'm not talking about Usman. I'm talking about anybody in the in the division. That's what I'm asking you about. It, it, would you consider him with anybody else, uh, in, you know, in the division? That I don't know, Kev. I don't know, Kev. I, I put on fights with the best fighters in the world, and 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 you know, I mean, how how old is Nick? I, you're asking me, you're asking me silly questions, Kevin. That's not silly. There's a lot of people that care about Nick Diaz. I agree, and I'm one of them. And uh, I don't, I, I don't want to see Nick Diaz get hurt. All right, very good. Well, Dana, we will let you roll. I know you have a busy day going, so I appreciate your time. Uh, UFC 275, Saturday from Singapore, live on pay-per-view. Dana White, thank you very much. Thank you, buddy. See you, bro.